Today, we speak of derivatives and their application to motion. Derivatives and motion. Today is not an easy lesson. There are elements of it that are easy, but overall, this is one where sometimes people take the L on the test. It doesn't have to be that way for us. So, here's what we have. First kind of example, this is the first kind of problem you're going to get on your test. Um, we have to talk about motion and uh, velocity and things of that nature. It says, given a function s is equal to f of t, s is what we measure in distance, and then f of t is what we measure in time. We say that a position function is s. s equals f of t. That tells us where we are at at a given time. So for example, in this situation, we're going to talk about a particle moving back and forth on the number line. So where is the particle at a given time? Is it at position 1? Is it at position 2? Is it at negative 1? Is it at negative 2? Where is it and which direction is it moving? Those are the things that we want to be able to determine. Now, we choose this as an example because it can be applied to real life very, very easily. Because we are a little bit lacking on time, one of the challenges that we have... So here we go. Um, given the position function, we can find velocity. Velocity is speed with direction. Okay, So velocity is the derivative. It is s prime, or f prime of t. That's how we determine velocity. When is a particle at rest? The particle is at rest when it is not moving. So what would the velocity be when the particle is not moving? Zero. zero. So when s prime of t, or s prime is equal to zero, um, or v is equal to zero, okay, that's when the particle is re at rest. Now, velocity is different than speed in that velocity has direction. If the velocity is positive, it's moving to the right. If the velocity is negative, it's moving to the left. Or if the velocity is positive, it would be moving up if the object's moving up and down, and negative if it's moving down. So the particle is moving in the positive direction or to the right when v of t, the velocity, is greater than zero. And the particle is moving in the negative direction, or to the left, when v of t is less than 0. OK with that? So this is my position function. It is s. I'm going to find the velocity function. The velocity function is the derivative, and I'm going to write it here. So v of t is equal to, what's the derivative of that function? 3t squared minus 12. So find the velocity at time t. That will be the first question you were asked. Can you say v of t is equal to 3t squared minus 12? Could you do that on a test? Good. Excellent. Now, I'm going to actually graph both of these functions, okay? And uh, I'm going to graph the position function here. So I'm going to graph, F, graph S of t right here. Whoops, sorry about that. And I'm going to graph V of t down below. We're all okay? This is going to take us two days. So this will be Monday, and, or uh, Friday, and it will be Monday, okay? So if I want to graph that, what shape does a cubic look like? Yeah. And if I factor this, t times t squared minus 12. So that means it would cross the x-axis at what values? Uh, plus or minus the root of 12. Right? Okay, everybody see the zero? 
Okay, then I'll take t squared minus 12 is equal to 0. I add the 12, I get t squared is equal to 12, and I square root both sides, and I get t is equal to plus or minus the root of 12. Uh, that's how we get where it crosses the x-axis. So we're looking at the graph. We aren't mapping the uh, particle motion yet. So the square root of 12 is about 3.5, so I'm going to negative 3.5, positive 3.5, and I'm going to put a dot at 0. Everybody okay with the position? So the velocity is the derivative. I took the derivative. Ah, velocity is the derivative. Yes. What's that? Yes. So the square root of 12 is about 3.5, maybe 3.7, somewhere around there. Okay. All right. I'm going to now graph the velocity. What does the velocity function look like? It will be a parabola. It will be a parabola. And if I factor out a 3, I get 3 times t squared minus 4. So where is that parabola going to cross the x-axis? Plus or minus 2. So I have a velocity function that looks like this. This is v of t. Okay, so I've, as I have these pieces... This is uh, extremely important. First of all, do we generally talk about positive time or negative time? Positive time, okay? So we're really not concerned about, about things to the left, right? Things to the left we're not concerned about because that would be negative time. I'm pointing to this right here. Is the velocity positive or negative right here? Why? Because I'm above the x-axis. So am I traveling to the right or the left? Right. right. Right here, is the velocity positive or negative? negative? Negative. So am I traveling to the right or the left? left? To the left. Do you see that? This tells me when I'm traveling to the left and when I'm traveling to the right. The velocity function does that. Notice how that uh, maps to what we have up here. Okay. I'm looking uh, right here. Okay. Is the slope positive or negative right here? So therefore, I'm traveling to the left. Is the slope positive or negative right here? Is the slope positive or negative? Positive, so I'm traveling to the right. Notice the difference between looking at the position function and the velocity function. Sometimes it's just easier to focus on the velocity function when you're asking that. So it says, what is the velocity after three seconds? Let's look at our graph. Is the velocity going to be positive or negative at 3? Positive. positive. We can determine the velocity by plugging it in. V of 3 is equal to what? 3 times 3 squared minus 12. What is 3 times 3 squared? 27 minus 12? 15. Okay. We are not given a label, Okay. are we? We're given a label? Are we? And, uh, okay, so we'll say feet per second, okay? I'll make sure we give a clear label on the test. When is the particle at rest? The particle is rest when the velocity is equal to? Zero. Let's look at our velocity function. When is the velocity equal to zero? At two. We won't talk about negative two because we don't talk about negative time. Right? If you wrote negative 2, I wouldn't mark it wrong, okay? But we talk about positive time, so at time equals 2 is when the particle is at rest. When is the particle moving in the positive direction? The particle is moving in the positive direction when velocity is positive, when the, functions, when the velocity function is above the x-axis. When is it above? From 2 to infinity. When is the particle moving in the negative direction? Um, you could say from negative 2 to 2. Uh, more appropriately, we would say from 0 to 2 because we don't talk about negative time. Everybody see that? Positive direction here, 
negative direction here. We all good? Yes. Okay. All right. Now the last part. This is pro so I'm guessing that these first parts you're like, hey, that's pretty solid. I'm good at that, right? Okay, the last one is, is probably the more difficult one. What we want to do is we want to find the total distance traveled over the course of eight seconds, okay? And in order to do that, we are going to actually diagram and illustrate the motion of the particle. And what we have to do is we have to consider when the particle starts, when it changes direction, and when it ends. Okay, at what time does the particle start? What do you think is generally a start time? Zero. zero. We start at time zero. Okay, so at time zero we have that. When did it change direction? So what direction am I going right now? I'm going to the left. What direction am I going right now? Right. When does it change from going from left to right? At zero or at a two, right? As a height of zero, but that's the x value of two. Agreed? So it changes direction at two. And at what time does it end? Um, in this problem, it says over the course of eight seconds. So it ends at time eight. So that's what we're looking at. Everybody got that? So, what I want to know is, I want to know where the particle is at those times. If I want to know the location of the particle, do I plug these values into the velocity or into the position? The position, see that? This tells me where I'm going, or where I'm at. This tells me what my speed is. It's not asking about speed, it's asking about position. So, let's go back to our position function right here. Okay, let's plug in zero. When you plug in zero, what do you get? You get zero. Excellent. Now, in which direction am I headed right af after zero? Which direction am I going? I'm going to the left, right? So tell me something about my output here. If I start at zero and I'm headed to the left, what should this output be? Everybody see that? Okay, so let's plug in two and see if we get a negative value. What's two cubed? 8 minus 24, negative 16, good. So I've got negative 16. Like you said, we're headed to the left. So we went to a negative number. And then we should be headed back to the right. So I should come up with a number that's at least further to the right than negative 16. And what do I plug in? I plug in 8, okay? Anybody, 8 cubed. 512? Good. 512. So we got 512, and we're going to subtract. What's that? 12 times 8? 96. So 512 minus 96, you all know that that is what? Good. 416. Is everybody cleared how I came up with the table? It ends at time 8. Oh. So we took these and we plugged them into S. That's where it changes directions, where the velocity is equal to zero. That's when the velocity is zero. Okay. All right. So let's map the motion. Okay. I'm going to put down uh, 0, and I'm going to put down negative 16. I'm going to put down 416. And underneath it, you don't have to do this. I'm doing this for people's help. It starts at 0 at what time? Time equals 0. It's at negative 16 at what time? At time equals 2, it's back here. And then at 416, it's at time Eight. So if you go in chronological order, we have to go here to there and then back there, right? So the motion of the particle is as follows. Starts here, heads back to negative 16, and travels forward to positive 416. 
So the question is, so I've now done letter F. It says draw a diagram to illustrate it. I've drawn the diagram. Now I want to do part E. It says find the total distance. How far did travel go from here to here? 16. How far did travel go from here back to zero? Another 16. And then how far did travel go from zero to 416? 416. And if you add all those up, you get 448. Thank you. Okay, take out your homework packet. It's There's no good way to do this other than working through your confusion. You can either climb the mountain confusion and be a champion on top, or you can run back down the other side. So you have in front of you, okay, two problems, okay, very similar to what we've done that you can start working through. And on the back side, problem three and four are also similar. You don't have to do five and six until Monday. Monday, we're going to teach you how to do this using your calculator. It's not necessarily easier using your calculator. It's just that those are problems that require the use of a calculator, okay? So try to get started on problem number one and two, and I'm going to come around and help you.